Hey everybody, welcome to Leon's Transit Parts and Repair. We're going to keep going with our carburetor weekend here. Uh, this package is from Miranda, and I believe there's going to be two HDC carburetors in here that have been uh, causing some trouble. And hopefully I'll be able to figure out what it is, because every time, every time I talk to somebody who... Uh, he was asking me about uh, if you have a source for new carburetor. Uh, I uh, oh, there's an eight. Yeah, it might be an HDC and an HDA. I won't. I'm not sure now. Anyway, I say, ah, you don't need a new carb. Rebuild the one you have if you still got it. And uh, yeah, I usually follow that with. You know, I don't find it's very, very uncommon that I find a, a carburetor that I can't go through and rebuild. So, hopefully, that's not the case today. So we do. We have an HDA. That's from, a, I think, an XL, and yeah, this one's the XL too. So, again, I like to start off just about any video on a carburetor or any surface, I should say, by doing a pressure test. Because that tells you so much. And this one's rock solid. Check that out. Barely even moving. And you can test in a case like this, when you've got an atmospheric vent hole in the back, you can make sure that the diaphragm's not just stick and stuff, or stiff and stuck by uh, taking a little tool and carefully hitting the rivet there. All right. This is cool. I'm glad that happened. I have depressed the diaphragm here. And that needle didn't move. So, let's get into this thing. But you don't want to disassemble this end under pressure. Especially if there's a risk of fuel being in there because you get it apart and it'll try and blow fuel at your face. Not the most I ideal thing on the planet. So, let's see what we have. This is a fresh K10 HDC kit here, so anything that we find in here that's bad, we'll be able to replace. That is awesome. These carbs are pretty simple. The only real risk that you've got is the check valve underneath the circuit plate. And I don't normally start off by by getting into those because it's pretty uncommon that they go bad yet that diaphragm is stiff as a board that is garbage when it makes this sound garbage maybe I know some guys have had luck softening these old diaphragms up the ones that are hard to find they'll soften them up in either uh, brake fluid uh, some people have said seafoam works. I personally haven't had a huge amount of luck with that. Uh, I think I've even heard that ATF, automatic transmission fluid, will do it. Uh, but this stuff's easy to find, so we're not going to waste our time with that. Alright, another issue I see is this inlet arm is definitely way too high because it's above the deck of the carburetor. See if I can get this to focus for you guys. You see how you can see the nub of it sticking up? In all likelihood, that's going to be too high. But since we're in here, let's do this right, and we'll go all the way down. I'm going to check the circuit plate. And replace that gasket that's underneath there, too. Now, this can be stuck in here pretty effectively. There's an opening on the side here you can get a small flat blade in and kind of pop it loose. I'm going to guess this one's already been loose. There's our spring. You don't want to lose that. That's the hardest thing to replace. Okay. 
There's also evidence that there's been some varnish in this carb. See this dark stuff right back there? That is varnish. That's old dried up gas. So while I've got the needle out, I will be, I'll get my brake clean out and really, really clean that out. But whether you're using brake cleaner, carburetor cleaner, you don't want to touch your parts you want to save, your, your soft parts, and that includes the tip of this needle. It'll swell up and, and go to garbage. Same thing is true with this check valve. I'm going to see if I can monkey around and get that off. A lot of these kits, it's really funny, uh, and I don't mean funny in a good way, they include in fact, I'll bet in this HDC kit they've included a new screen, yep, there it is, and a new snap ring for in there. But they don't include the damn check valve itself. And all the check valve is, is a piece of the, well, I want to get it apart. You'll see, you know how a lot of these have the tan uh, diaphragm gasket, or uh, fuel pump diaphragm for the other side. It's just a little circle that floats in here, and it, it is a check valve. It has to move up and down. Well, you can still sometimes on eBay find the, the Home Light branded version of these, but it's the whole brass seat in assembly, so you got to pop this whole mess out of here and seat a new one in, when in reality, if you just had that little tiny piece of rubber and you're careful, you can get this snap ring out, just like that. And then being equally careful, kind of rotate around, and you should be able to get the screen to come out. And there it is. Now, I don't think there's any way in the world I'm going to get you guys focused on that. But the original one down in here is black. And it's deformed. And I can see that it's deformed. So this is going to have to be replaced. So we know that's a problem on this carb. Yeah. I could see that it actually sagged down into where it was supposed to be uptight. So that check valve is trash. So while we're making our list of what's wrong, let's get into the, the pump side here and see what we have. These are crispy too. Oh gosh. Oh yeah. Yeah, these have never pumped fuel. That is for darn certain. And the the fuel inlet screen that's supposed to be here is missing. So yeah, there's a few things here that just aren't cool. Just aren't cool at all. But every once in a while in these HDC kits I have found where they accidentally included that little little piece of check valve. So let's see if we're going to get lucky in this kit. I can almost tell you for certain we're not. This is so very rare. There's a screen. Now, that's so funny. They include a screen and a snap ring for it, but not the damn check valve itself. That is just so goofy. But I guess that's so that they can sell a, a $10 assembly there, as opposed to just that little piece. And I'm going to check through my garbage and just see if I accidentally have one. But I'm highly doubtful. I don't ever throw, well, rarely throw spare parts out of the kit away that I don't use because you never know. Nope. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to locate a check valve, get all this crap cleaned up, and then we'll, uh, we'll come back for reassembly. All right. So we're pretty much ready to start putting this thing back together. You guys won't believe what I found. Uh, when I was cleaning everything out, I tried to blow fuel or uh, cleaner 
through this elbow. This is the fuel inlet elbow that your hose hooks on. Caramelized, full. It was full from about here all the way back in the block and then part way up this way. And I mean, we're talking full, and that was pretty hard. The, the cleaner would not punch through it, just out of the pressure of the can. My air hose wouldn't punch through it. So I actually had to get a 16th inch drill bit out and hand twist it in and work from both sides and get it cleared up. And then once it was opened up and the cleaner could flow through, it cleaned it out pretty quick. But these fuel barbs, these uh, metal ones, they just press fit. So you take note of your clock position and you can actually remove it and then put it back in when you're done. And there you are. So, we're going to work on, I don't think I've ever shown you guys, uh, kind of the little debacle it takes to get this check valve seat out. And there's, there's a lot of ways you can approach it. Usually I can get under here with a pick type tool and pop it loose. Not always. Yep, there it goes. So you see that seat just comes right out. Now I want to show you what's going to come out of here. See that? That is supposed to be a perfectly round piece of gasket material that acts as a seal in there. How is that going to seal anything? So there's nothing dissolved in, or no goop in here. And I can see daylight through to the carburetor bore, so that's good. So those check valve kits, again, you have to go out to eBay for those. The few that I get on hand I keep here in the shop for repairs just like this. But what you're going to get is a pre-assembled cover and brass body, and then the the actual valve itself. So you slip the rubber in first and then set this right on top. So nothing technical about it, but I'll tell you what, if one of these check valves is bad, you can have some real erratic tuning problems, but don't start right here unless you have a reason to know that it's bad. Because so many times I would say one out of every ten or so of these carburetors I have to do this to, at most. Now getting that little sucker to sit back down in there can be kind of fun. Because you want it to be flat. There we go. And that, just get it started in its bore as, you know, straight as possible. And you're going to tap it into place. Now there's carburetor linkage here, so I'm going to move this off to the side of the bench so that I'm not pounding on something that's important, like carburetor linkage. Just get her started. You want it flush with the bore of the carb, or excuse me, the the housing around here, all the little sealing ridges for that circuit plate gasket, you want this to be just slightly below. And you want to make certain that you don't hit those sealing ridges. Because then they won't work. Slightly wider tool would be better, but that's okay. It's in. So now we can just put this thing back together and we'll pressure test it along the way. So before I get there, anytime you see that kind of caramelized look that we looked at earlier, you see the dried up fuel, check everything. At that point you don't know where it might have gone bad at, where the garbage may be. And if you miss one spot, you're going to end up coming back into the carburetor and doing it again, which is nobody's idea of fun. I'm going to replace the circuit plate gasket. And those can be on there pretty good. Now this one actually is pretty clean. It's amazing. I've seen some of these where moisture, probably from ethanol fuel, has gotten in here. And the back of this circuit plate, just rustier than heck, because it is steel. 
and you want to take the time to clean that crap off. I like to just go to the bench grinder and use the wire wheel. Because you don't want any of that trash coming loose at some point because it'll plug a carburetor passage in short order. Alright, we'll select our appropriate gasket. This is a single screw, so we want the one that has that kind of Z, oops, sorry, Z shape to it. That's a fuel passage. If you use the wrong one that doesn't have that Z shape, you won't have any fuel flowing where it needs to flow. To the low speed gasket. You'll probably be able to get it to start on the high if you have the, the throttle trigger pulled, but the minute you try to go to idle, it's going to die. All right. We got a fresh needle, so we shouldn't have to dink around with stretching that spring and all that fun stuff. We're using the same arm, though. And this one is not a captured arm, so it comes loose from the plate here. So what you got to do is slip it under, hold it there with your index finger, and keep it kind of tilted so that the needle will stay in place and then slip whoop, slip it into the carb. And if you bumble it like I did, you get to do it again. We'll see how many times I can uh, do that. I want that spring to stay straight. There we go. Now, if you struggle with that step, you're not alone. I got lucky that time. But I was checking my spring and I could see it had not quite seated properly, so I was getting that back into place. If it's too crooked, you just got to pull it off and start all over again. So I'm going to start this other screw before tightening them both down. And then I want to deal with the height of this inlet lever right now. You want these circuit plate screws tight, but they're small. Don't strip them. You just want to make sure that there's even good pressure to make sure that gasket is sealing. So we noted that that was sitting quite high. So exact opposite if I was trying to set it higher, I'm going to try and hold it on this side and bend. Now it's not captured, so this is going to be uh, difficult to say the least. I don't want to bend on this side. All right, I'm going to try the the needle nose way and see if we can get there. It's still very high. Wow. Part of why I don't want to bend on this side if I can avoid it is I can see that it's already been adjusted a multitude of times along the way somewhere. It's just out of shape. Keep using the tip of these pliers. Alright. That may even be a little too low. It is. That's okay. Because now it's easy to come under here and just kind of twist your screwdriver and shape it right there. So I can just see it above. And I can see it's moving that needle. So, I think I'm happy with that. But what we'll do is we'll assemble this side of the carburetor so that we can pressurize it and put that big diaphragm on under pressure. And that way we'll know for certain. Okay. Now there's only one way these gaskets can go. The index holes provide you the road map. And sometimes there's enough staining of the carb block to help you with the shapes. So that's close, we'll let the, ha, and in this case, not totally uncommon, this corner pin is broken off. So we've only got the one here to align us. So we'll just have to be a little more careful. Alright, I'm pretty comfortable that that's right. We got an even, even gasket all the way around.
damn magnetized screwdriver. Yeah, that's really not the best thing on the planet to have that that index pin broken. Not at all. Okay. But that's squared up. Everything's where it should be. Alright, let's put some pressure to this so we can assemble this side. Sure, our new needle is if nothing else. Ah, it does help to close the bleed valve. Look at that, it just popped off. That thing is leaking like a sieve. Maybe I should have stretched that spring. not be all that needle but it is popping off too soon I may have to dig through and try and find another one of these covers where's my soapy water I'm gonna see I think it's leaking around this damn gasket back here let's see if we can get some soap oh yeah we're leaking all over the place fuel bar gasket. Wow. Cute. The needle's popping off too soon. I can hear it over here. Alright. Well, that's fun. That's super fun. Okay. I used to have some of those in stock find out if I still do. Okay, I don't have one of those covers in stock, so we're just going to have to go with it. Uh, I know uh, I know it was lined up right. What we're going to do is we're going to upgrade the old just flathead screw to one that has some thread or a head to it. And that should be about the right length. That way I can tighten it down good. Now you got to be careful. You can you strip these out. But I realized the minute I shut off the video, we hadn't put our fuel inlet screen in. And I want that in there. Because anything that makes it by the filter, this should catch. So you want to take a socket or other round device that's about the right size and center that thing up there and push it down in. Now, that doesn't always work. Sometimes you'll see it went in cockeyed, crooked. It's only half covering the bottom. Peel it out, start over. Flatten it out before you start over, but definitely make sure that it's lined up properly. Otherwise, it's next to useless. So, let's get this damn thing back in place. Better if we had the three points of alignment, but the two are good enough. Set this down without being a bumble. There we go. Looks good. I had to do this before on these carbs. Go to something that has a, a head on it so that I can get it good and tight. Hell, even that slot is deeper. That might be enough to get it where it needs to be. But with the head, you can use a quarter inch socket. There. That's good and tight. That should slow down enough, the leakage. Some of these gaskets are. leaking like crazy. Yeah, the rest of it slowed down pretty good. That needle is still leaking. So what we're going to do here, you'll run across this sometimes, we're going to stretch that spring. I probably have some springs up here that would work. 
Again, I rat hole those too, and sometimes I find them from a, you know, somebody on the web that's just selling and happens to have the right thing. So I'll rat hole them here in the shop. But most of the time, you can take the old spring and stretch it by about a coil's width. Now it's hard to get a feel for what that is, but I just grab both ends and kind of go like that. Now I haven't achieved much yet. There I have. Let's see if I can get this to focus for you guys. Oh, come on. That might have done it. There you go. You can see where I stretched. It's pretty clear. That added more resistance. Should have added several pounds of pop-off pressure. So let's try this again. And if that doesn't work, well, yeah, it's going to work. This is good. This carb has thrown up just about every challenge that an HDC can do. Oh no, damn it. Ah, as I said, this carb is throwing up every challenge. These springs don't weigh anything at all. It's so easy to knock them over. I ended up tilting too far forward, dropping the needle out of the slot here. Tell you though, if this fuel arm fights me much more, I'm gonna. I think I do have one of those on hand. I'll replace it. Spring doesn't want to stand up now. That's not uncommon even before you stretch one. Hell, it acted like it was sticking to my thumb. Alright. And once again, the spring is cocked off to the side over here towards me, so I'm going to try and work it into its nub under here. There it goes. You gotta keep pressure on this plate until you get these screws tight or that spring is gonna punch everything up and you get to do it all over again. Which if you want to do the same thing 400 times, great. Me, I get a little, a little pissy after about the second. I like working on saws, but I don't like working on the same problem over and over and over again on the same saw. That's a little irritating. All right. Okay. We're back to a fairly normal rate of leakage for these HDCs. You guys can see that needle. You can see it's moving slowly as it gets closer to the the 5 to 6 range is going to slow down. I know some of it's leaking past my hose here because I can see when I move the hose the needle will jump. Let's go ahead and get this side assembled under pressure and see how she does. And there's a little bit of gunk on that cover that I didn't get cleaned off. Okay, I'm holding that cover on tight. The needle is now at about four. Yeah, these HDCs, that single screw cover on the back does not lend well to a good seal. You need it on all four corners like on the diaphragm cover here. Just way more effective. Now if your inlet arm is set too high it's going to touch this housing and as you screw this thing down all of a sudden you're going to get to a screw and this is just going to release completely. Well that hasn't happened so I'm pretty comfortable needles pretty much quit moving at around two. Alright, so I like to test this. Yeah, we're good. Okay, 
I know that one ended up being a lot longer than I expected on the HDC. So I think I'm going to break and we'll tackle this HDA on a separate video. But Miranda, at least the one for the XL2, ready to go.